She has got 10 number one singles, more than 11 million albums sold to date, nearly 48 million followers on Twitter. We're talking about the biggest female pop star in the world. Everyone say hello to Katy Perry. You could be yes. here, but you're a busy woman on a worldwide press tour. So is video chatting how you keep in touch with friends and family while you're on the road? Um, actually it is. I do use a lot of iChat, but I wish I could be there with the ladies who lunch so badly. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing stories and giving tips and asking for advice, because I've been watching you guys behind the scenes as we set up this shot, and you guys are real ladies talking some real issues, and I like that. Aw, thanks thank so you. much. <laughs> so when, when the album Prism, just before it came out, you sent out some t teasers, and one of which you were burning your infamous blue wig. So just yeah. how different is this Katie that we're getting on Prism um, right now? Well, I was just trying to give the example that it was time for um, a new era to begin because Teenage Dream came out three years ago and, you know, we all change, our perspective change, is, uh, hopefully it grows and evolves and we evolve as humans and we have different other stories to tell and so uh, I collected three years worth of stories and um, I made a record out of them um, but it was important just to kind of show in that video that I was moving on, although I will always play the songs off of Teenage Dream um, on all of my tours because you know when you go and see a show what you really want to see is like all the songs you know um, and so I'll be playing all those songs that you guys love. Nice. <laughs> we here at The Social have Roar on our playlist to get us pumped up for the show. What songs get you pumped up Katie? Um, I'm in a real 90s fave right now 90s phase right now. Um, I'm listening of course it's close to Christmas so from Actually, I started in October, strangely enough. Um, <laughs> I listened to that Mariah. I, I listened to the Mariah Carey Christmas album basically Classic. all day wow. when I'm getting re <laughs> ready. Um, but I love like early um, Madonna, early Mariah, early Whitney. Um, I love some of that deep house stuff like Cece Peniston, Wee, Crystal woo! Waters. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking uh -huh. about? <laughs> That's I like those big soul divas right now. Mm. That is huge. Okay, so let's talk about some of the songs on here. I know that you've said that unconditionally right now, your favorite song on this album, you said it it passes your goosebump test. Uh, what exactly yes. is that? <laughs> well, you know, I have this real visceral kind of physical reaction when I'm writing these songs uh, at the end of the day when I put all the pieces together and listen back at the soundboard. And it gives me kind of goosebumps all over my arms and my legs. And I kind of trust that moment as my intuition saying, hey, this could possibly mean something to someone. This song could mean something. And Unconditionally is a song about, you know, the highest level of love, like the nirvana of love, the level that we all hope and seek to get to, the level where there's no fear. And in concerning a relationship where you can not have to wake up an hour uh, before he does and put your makeup on so you you can look natural. <laughs> <laughs> another song. You can. Another song. Sorry. On the album. Then, um, if we're going from unconditionally to legendary lovers, mm. which you yes. said was inspired by an email chain. Can you tell us about what would mm. this email chain? What was in this email and how that happened? <laughs> Well, I, you know, what I do is I go on tour and that's where I collect all, all of my nuggets for um, writing these songs, whether it's phrases or titles or uh, hear, uh, fr uh, things I've heard in conversation, idioms, double entendres, parts of speech, you know, language. And I put them in a recorder and um, I go back and kind of have them transcribed uh, after like a two year period. And I take this folder with all of these notes into the studio and I see what it, if any of this stuff still resonates with me and relates with m what I'm going through in my life. But, um, you know, Legendary Lovers came out of just me writing emails and I said we could be legendary lovers. And it just kind of illuminated off of the screen as a title to me and I put it in my um, little recorder and that's how it came about. But it's it's got like this kind of India flavor. It's very uh, spicy. Mm -hmm. oh, like that. Speaking of spicy, you just announced a massive world tour, and since you're known for your over-the-top visual performances, what can we look forward to? 
Well, the Prismatic World Tour will definitely be hitting up Canada because Canada is so important to me. They've been, you guys have been um, giving me so much love from the beginning of my career, and I always give back the amounts of love that uh, is given to me. And so, y you guys were gonna are gonna have a lot of dates on this um, upcoming tour, which I will be announcing very soon. But let's just say that the summer is looking delightful for you. Wow, oh, very nice. And the t and this the setup of the stage it has me literally in the audience so I'm closer to the uh, fans than I've ever been and it won't be so you know cartoony like the last one but it will be wildly colorful colorful you know what your friendships often very colorful and I know that you your girls uh, like one of our faves Rihanna mm -hmm. I know you're all yeah, on the social right so we're gonna be creeping you on Twitter and <laughs> Facebook and the whole nine Katie so what is that like to have that kind of friendship and, and do you draw the line between what is personal between the two of you as friends and then trying to manage this public persona as well Kate Hudson is another one how do you manage that line um, well, I don't think there's too much to manage because I'm really drawn to uh, genuine personalities. Uh, I'm drawn to the people that are unaffected by this kind of uh, spotlight or whatever has happened to him, happened to them. Um, I, I'm drawn to the down to earth girls, and um, you know, Re is so unaffected and so sweet and down to earth, but very smart and still knows how to have fun and you know she's wild and maybe I live some of my wild life through her <laughs> but you know we get there's a there's a lot we talk about a lot we have a lot to relate to we're going through a lot of the same stuff and um, it's 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 different kind of stuff so um, we kind of uh, really get to be with each other and kind of um, come together on these ideas that maybe a lot of other people aren't going through. And we just go, hey, girl, how's your situation going? And can you believe that this happened? And I know. And it's like <laughs> all the behind-the-scenes stuff we get to kind of comment on. And that's that we get to share this kind of a life together as friends. You have a lot of young fans. I have a niece who's seven years old who's a massive fan of yours. I'm just wondering what advice would you love for your young fans to know about navigating sort of girlhood uh, in this day and age? Oh, well, um, you know, I think that you just have to be true to yourself in all situations and um, just kind of no self-love before any other love. That's something that I really learned this year uh, a lot about is kind of building up my own self-love before I give my love away. Um, because if you don't have that self-love, that self-confidence, and it's dependent on what other people think or what other people say, then it can be broken or taken away from you at any time. And it becomes very fragile and very scary. Um, so... Um, I would ha I would say just focus on loving yourself, building up yourself and your character, and try and live your life with integrity, and don't follow the trend. Earlier this month, you surpassed Justin Bieber as the most followed celebrity on Twitter. How does that make you feel? <laughs> uh, terrified. <laughs> because, I mean, can you imagine, like, th when I do typos, I didn't... I didn't really go to school much because I decided to have this life. And um, so, therefore, I am very gra grammatically incorrect uh, a lot and use the words your and their in the it, it wrong ways. And then I use it on Twitter, and I, I run my Twitter. My manager doesn't run my Twitter. My publicist doesn't run my Twitter. I hit the button and press send. That's why you can tell I run it because there are so many misspellings. <laughs> but I get... I literally get crucified for a lot of that stuff, but um, it's a great way to have that direct connection with people um, whenever you need it with a push of the button uh, that is not, you know, it's not controlled. It's just coming from the horse's mouth. <laughs> uh, and P.S., if you just follow at Melissa Grello, Katy Perry, I will uh, vet all of these tweets beforehand <laughs> and ensure that there are no grammatical or spelling errors. You have my guarantee. Thank that. you. <laughs> will you be my editor, please? Yeah. Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> Katie. Okay, so last night you had a very, very special, special show. It was E-Talk Presents Katy Perry Prism. Now, you're used to performing in huge stadiums, big stadium shows. Last night, very intimate. What is that like for you as a performer? 
I love doing um, these type of shows because it really showcases the song and showcases my voice. And I'm not very good at choreography anyways, so I have to, so I don't have to dance. <laughs> I don't have to pretend like I know how to dance. I actually don't have to masquerade as a pop star very much. I can kind of be who I really am, which is a singer songwriter. You know, I started out just writing songs on the guitar and then all of a sudden I'm in these wonderful glittery costumes and everything is so fun um, that it's nice to go back to kind of the essential oils of who I am and represent that side of myself. And it's really nice to do intimate stuff. I mean, it, 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 sometimes it's fun to be able to uh, be in the same kind of uh, stuffy, hot air as the other 300 people and we're all breathing the same air. And I get to look <laughs> everybody in the eye so much more so than when I'm doing stadiums. But when I do um, arenas, actually, I get to bring a lot of uh, fun bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Katie, for helping us roar and for chatting with us today. The album. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank the you, album. ladies. Take Keep care. Thank you. Thank you. The album Prism is in stores right now, and make sure you tune in to eTalk Presents Katy Perry Prism on eTalk Monday, December 2nd, and Tuesday, December 3rd at 7 p.m. We'll see you after the break.